Hello then, folks. How are we doing? Welcome back to the channel. It's been a little while. Uh, if you missed the end of my last video, I sort of left it a little bit open-ended as to what's next on the channel. And rather than me making a video where I talk about that in detail and struggle to probably talk about it, um, I spoke to Diz, Mr. Diz, uh, over on his The Scouting Centre show that he does. He does it's, a, it's a podcast that he does with many different creators talking about many different topics. I've been on it a couple of times before. I'm sure I've linked it in a video before. Um, and I thought I'd let Diz sort of ask some of the questions that you guys would have answers to. So what you're gonna see is a half an hour version, which is sort of all about the channel itself. Uh, there's a full version as well, I'll leave a link in the description where you can watch, we talk about all different sorts of topics. Um, yeah, we address a lot of what we're talking, what, what you're probably wondering um, in this video. Uh, hopefully you watch it all the way through. If you do, leave a like on the video at the end and I'll see you hopefully soon as this video will kind of explain. All right, thank you for the support, thank you for the love and I'll see you again, goodbye. Well, sort of goodbye, I mean, Days over to you. If my own content suffers, then I guess I'm just depressed for six months. <laughs> Here we are. <laughs> Here, we are Here we are, Here we are. Yeah, I good. remember at the start of the first ever scouting centre you were on, and I had four or five people give their views on you, didn't I? It was when I was doing preview videos. And I remember mm. second yellow card, his was that you are the dad of the community. <laughs> and that yeah. you take on responsibility and that you, you'd always want everyone else to be better and feel better. And I feel like you take that role so seriously. And if anything, for me personally, that seems to be your main job, whether you're paid for it or not. <laughs> I'm not. Like, Clarify well, yeah. now, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're clearly not paid for it, but that is your main job. But like, like you say, it comes at a consequence where the job that you want to do and that pays the bills and that you know, you want success in, suffers from that. Like, there, there, ha you ha there has to be a world where you pull back, right? There has to be. Um, Taking your advice as well, like you said, you know. Yeah. And you've given some great advice here, and all these content creators are gonna, are gonna watch this, and they're gonna listen to it, and they're gonna be like, oh, right, you know what, great advice, tick, 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 tick. And they're gonna go forward, and they're gonna, they're gonna take that advice. But like I said, I think it's, it's gotta come to a point where, your health, your happiness, your work ethic comes back into Dr. Benji, right? Uh, <laughs> if, hmm, it's a good question. Um, I don't, I don't know what I think I'm better at anymore. I think I'm really good at doing that role that you talk about, and I think. Part, part of it is like, it sounds really, I don't know, I don't know if it sounds stupid. Part of it is like, I want to be, I kind of want to be that guy anyway. Mm. Like I want people to think that it's, it's, I, I, what, what I've always wanted with content creation is I want people to think it's something to be proud of. And I was really like, so, so at times I've been accused of taking it all a bit too seriously. But I think this is like, as much as I've had my struggles with it in the last few, like the last year probably, I'm so proud of like, I'm still proud of what I built up and I'm still proud of like how we've built the show down. And I'm still proud of the fact that so many things have come from like me making videos years ago has probably inspired so many other people and content creators to think, do you know what? I can do that better than him or I can do that. Like either, either or is fine with me. I, I, and if I focus on me again, is there anyone, is there anyone pushing that? Or can I do, or can I do both? I don't know. Maybe I can, maybe I'm, Maybe I'm being a little bit daft about it. Maybe I can do more. Maybe I can do both sides. And I think pulling back from trying to do everything is is one of my biggest issues. Like I've tried to be YouTuber, content creator, head of the showdown, streamer, influencer, Twitter user, football commentator, like all these things that are like I've tried to have little bits, little bits of. And then again, the bit that's like talked about is obviously I'm Doug's dad <laughs> and Eddie's partner. And there's obviously a family element that like, I'm so conscious of not like, I don't want to just forget that side of it. Um, I wish I, I, sorry to repeat myself again. I am genuinely sorry because it gets, this is boring in itself. I, I don't, I don't, I don't really know. I don't, I don't know where I fit in at the moment. And that's, that's kind of my problem is that I could, the easy thing, and, I, and this is the thing I like, people forget maybe, and it's, it's arguably what I probably did with this year is I just do what I've always done. Like, don't take any risks, do what you've always done. 
you'll earn X amount a year. No one's gonna, no one's gonna care. Like I say, no one's gonna criticize you. Everything's gonna be cool. You're not gonna take leaps of faith that are gonna go wrong. You're not gonna have to then deal with the consequence of that. Just plod along, everything will be all right. It's like being stuck in a job that you're not like loving, but you also realize it's just good for everyone else. So it's like, I'll keep doing this because, you know, it pays the bills, does the job. Um, but I guess what you're sort of what you're sort of saying is that I should I should want more of like the good things I've already achieved, and I'm kind of are you saying I'm giving up on it a little bit if I don't? A little bit, and and I also feel like because you've got so many roles, it's easier to focus on things like being the community manager than <laughs> focusing on your own content. Not an official title, by the way, but if yeah. someone <laughs> want to pay me for the last five years, I can send you an invoice. Um, yeah. It's not a problem. I reckon twenty five grand a year will do it. So, you know, tax free, tax free. Tax, so, well, no, you can tax it if you want. Probably better to tax it. But, um, but yeah. So I, I'm thinking that because you 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 take on all these hats, you wear all these hats. It allows you also, rather than taking that risk, looking at your your YouTube, you know, ripping it apart and and just taking that leap of faith, you can bury yourself in the community aspect of it which then allows you to, you're still, you know, you are obviously the head of the table. And I mean that when I say that you are the number one person in the football manager community when anything goes wrong, anything goes right. You know, there's a lot that you deserve 100% credit for. But I feel like because you've got this multiple facets, when things are a little bit difficult in relation to the YouTube aspect, for instance, it's easy for you to still be the number one guy, but in a different aspect, like the community role. Uh, yeah, I think I think that's right. I think what's funny is, dude, I don't know how many people know that I feel like this. I'd, I'd like to think no one knew. Until I said something at the end of my video recently, I'd like to think people probably just thought, he's all right, he's fine. Because that's what I'm trying to show off, really. I'm not, this, is, this isn't a side of me I particularly like. I'd, I'm not sitting here thinking, Oh, I'm glad I've been able to showcase this side of me. Like, I'm not overly proud of it. Like, I don't think it's something. It's not. A, it's not a place. This place. This, the, the, the mental place I'm in right now is not a place I enjoy being in, because ultimately it reminds me of 2013 when I was 22, 23, and I was just a mess. I just thought I didn't have anything going for me. I was. I was. I was as depressed as they come back then. And I didn't have any, I had nothing. I did nothing, did nothing. And that's why I can't stop. That's why like my, my situation now is like, I need a plan, I need to figure out what's next. And that's, that's it's probably fear to be honest, mate. Like I'm sitting here not knowing what's next and that scares me more because that's how I felt for five years. I was like, shit, I don't know what comes after this. I don't know what, I can't see the end of what's to come. And again, I think having a goal and something to achieve is cool. But I never, part of me never thought I'd, I'd complete them. So when we talked about like 100,000 subscribers, it was like, yeah, maybe one day. I remember when I first started, people were like, yeah, you'll never get to like 50, mate. It's like, mm, we'll see. We'll see how long I stick at this for. Um, and now here we are. So, I don't know, I feel like you ask me questions, Diz, and I go on tangents about how sad I am every time. <laughs> no, but it's because that's where you are right now. And I feel like part yeah. of improvement is acceptance. And I feel like accepting where you are and being, and it's a bit different, right? Because we're doing this in, in a bit of a public forum, as in this will be seen by, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to like hundreds and thousands of people. Um, but ultimately it's, it's accepting where you are to be able to have a plan for the future. I feel like that helped me. So when I was going through quite a lot of stuff, and I, and I was, like, that's why Scouting Centre is now t two times a week. That's why it is where it is now, because this allowed me to focus on having goals and help, if that makes sense. And yeah. I feel like that's kind of like, it's, it's, it's where you are. And there's nothing wrong with being where you are because you've achieved so much. It's okay not to be okay, as 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 the popular phrase goes. Mm. But then eventually there has to be a way where we start planning for the comeback because the comeback is always going to be better than the setback. And I genuinely believe that about you. I think you just need to believe it about yourself. Though. I, hope so, I hope so. And I think you just need to believe that about yourself, though, eventually. And you'll get there. Yeah. I, I can't, like... I can't stop. I have to keep going. 
Mm. Like, there's not, there's not, that's the, the idea of like stopping entirely is not entered my mind. It's the question's really been of what capacity does this carry on with? And I still like, and the ideas I've got for my YouTube channel are actually sick. Like, I think they'd be great. But right now, they won't be as good as they should be. So, my, my, again, the fear is the unknown of like, oh man, I hope the spark comes back. And it has before. I've got, I, New York was the example. I thought it was before. And I came back and I did Glory Hunter and it banged and I did AFC Thames and it banged and it was like, okay, everything's fine. Like, we're, we're chilling. But right now, and then the showdown came out of that as well, right? So, there, there was loads that happened beyond me last feeling like this. Um, but it, it it took me it took me six months a year to sort of get over again it took me going back to new york to sort it out which is not a cheap way of dealing with a problem <laughs> um <laughs> maybe maybe this is if ellie's watching this we should probably go back so i could have to, she, she would be done i don't think doug on that flight goodness me definitely not um i was, I was gonna zealand's got cheap accommodation i hear <laughs> that's true yeah yeah but right now zealand's like this why are you offering my place out who are you <laughs> i'd be concerned i won't get my bags so you gotta be careful yeah. uh very inside joke for those that follow on twitter uh, Don't Sana, you'll be fine yeah so i just I, I basically i want i want some answers i think this is this conversation is probably helping a little bit to get them and again i do i feel i almost feel guilty to people watching this that because there will be people there's some people that said it before that think like it's a bit of a worries me act like he's complaining about making football manager videos and but I, I, what i think probably has come out of this conversation is that probably hopefully because perception is part of the battle as well right because you don't have to to answer things that aren't true hopefully people realize that it's so much more than just that like it's not that like again that the easy option would be just to record some videos and loads of youtubers get stuck in that by the way of doing videos that they're not that happy with but ultimately again pay the bills, bills. Yeah. yeah so it's like whatever and i've and i've all the videos i've ever done like while making them i'm like this is this is great fun like when i sit down to record and i'm like gear myself up to do a video i love doing the video it's just that bit when i'm editing it like i look back at myself and i'm like man are you happy doing this mm. like i'm not sure man like, i'm not it's hard to know and i see it like because I, I see that side of i see that side in people quicker than your average person i think anyone that's been through it like has been through like depression or whatever can see that quickly mm. and what's weird is when you see it in yourself and you're like oh hang on a minute <laughs> that's not cool let me people watch this now again man he's struggling you're not wrong <laughs> you've, you've nailed me <laughs> so yeah it's a funny old thing and it is content creation I think that's one of the things I've always admired about you is the fact that you are so open about speaking about some of the struggles in relation to content creation, in relation to mental health. And I feel like that's what makes or sets apart you because it's easy to go brand Dr. Benji in circumstances like this and literally, like you say, you're churning it out. But I feel like you're helping people by being open and honest as to this is what happens. This is content creation. This is the pressure it can bring on you these are the situations you can find yourselves in and i always feel like that's helped a lot of people hopefully hopefully it makes them look out for them i don't think you can stop them from happening but i hope people can look out for them and i think that that's so to me that's the that's the important bit of that is that like the, a lot of a lot of the things in content creation can't be prevented because they're just part of the journey of becoming a content creator and i could talk about being a content creator again take away all the football manager elements of it i could talk about being a content creator forever like I know, I know there's people that have got some millions of subscribers but again there aren't many people that have had the journey that i've had in that i started when i was 16 and and we talked about it last, i think we talked about it last time right i watched by burnham special mm. it was a year ago because it's, it's been out just just over a year now and like he 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 managed just to sum up a lot of my feelings in songs and it's really because he's very similar age to me and me and him could tell the content story we could do a great podcast me and bo burnham not that he would be i don't think he'd fancy it but like we'd do a great podcast in that we could talk about what it's like to be a 16 year old doing this but what it's like to be a t so so it's the process of like being 10 and not having the internet being 16 and being like first to the internet it felt like at 16 or whatever but it was like broadband and widely available and everyone was on it then to create content on the internet that was viewable to anyone and everyone and then for it to sort of peter out and and fail and not be quite so good and it and it like not quite be what you thought it would be and then for it to really do exactly what you wanted it to do and that not be enough and like that's 
that's a really interesting element of it because the idea is that you get to a point where everything's great and, and i'd love to do a documentary one day on all the youtubers that have got a million subscribers that haven't made a video in five years i bet they're fascinating i bet the stories they've got and the tales they tell and they and those stories for me should be everywhere because the amount of people now that have got TikTok accounts with thousands of followers or Twitter accounts that don't understand the pitfalls of what it takes to be a creator and the amount of school kids that want to do this as a career, they're only seeing Mr. Beast, right? They're only, they're only seeing like the guys at the very top. They're only seeing the side men. And while they do great stuff and it's not on them to have these conversations, I do think, like, I, know, I know so many moms and dads that have got kids that want to do this right that want to do, want to be a youtuber want to be an influencer want to be on love island do all the things that are exciting in the same way that we wanted to be blue peter presenters do you know what i mean it's that sort of thing and they don't and they're not I, the last time i had this conversation seriously was with the hairdressers weirdly enough she said like what what would you like when did you <laughs> my son wants to be a youtuber i was like tell him not to <laughs> tell him to focus on his gcses but it's but it's a conversation that is only is only being had if you want to hear it so I hope you've been tricked if we're watching this. <laughs> you've been tricked into hearing it a little bit. But but it's also not it's not just for creators this conversation. It's also a conversation for people that are watching so they can understand that it's bigger than just like the creator. You have a massive impact on a creator. One email, one message can change a creator's week, month, year. Like Bo, Bo Burnham did one special on Netflix and it's and it sent me into six months of panic attacks. Like not that he did it on purpose. But the influencing which you have on your fellow creators and fellow people that do stuff online, where, again, it's a very insecure place at times. Like, I think, and it, and it, to round it off a little bit, and like, it goes into Twitter as well. One tweet can ruin someone's day. But the, but another tweet can make it. And that's something that needs to be a bit considered more. It's a bit, there's the whole thing of like, be kind to one another. This is where someone clips up me telling someone on my stream to fuck off because they've said something about <laughs> Jordan Henderson. But but that's like, hopefully that's entertaining at the time. But it's a it's a broader point about like how we view content and if it's a safe space and if it is a safe space, maintaining that. And if it's not what we do to at least educate people, like people have to make their own choices and their decisions. And I'm not saying don't do this. I'm just saying be aware of the pitfalls and whether that be football manager or makeup tutorials or ASMR or cleaning drains out. Shout out to my boy who does that. He's great. I forget his name, but he's wonderful. Um, like all, all these different genres and areas of content, which then lead to it being a career. It's not as simple as just turn it on, turn it off. It doesn't work like that.